Hey everybody, it's Jamie. Hi, and Gemma. From Plato and Preschool. Thanks for joining us this afternoon. We're on a little bit later. We were trying to get everything ready for our class next week. And you know how time goes. <laughs> too fast. <laughs> always, never, always too much to do and never enough time. So. Today, we thought we would give you a tour of our dramatic play area. We change our dramatic play monthly. Uh, it's basically a kitchen home living area for about two weeks every month. And then for a week or two, we try to change it into something a little bit more elaborate. Um, and if you've been watching our videos, you'll know that in January, we had it as a hot drink, a star drinks cafe with hot chocolate and coffee and tea. We've done an airport, a cookie bakery, a birthday party, I don't sandwich shop. Um, next month we're doing a pizza parlor and so we try to make it something really exciting and interesting for the kids. This month because we're doing our bear unit and learning about different kinds of bears and teddy bears. That's why she's holding a bed. Not just because she feels like I do she has also really feel like I'd like to curl up on the bed or on the couch with a, with a with bear, teddy bear and a book and a blanket. <laughs> that never happens for me. Anyway, um, we have it set up as a vet clinic. We do some version of this every year. Yeah, it's not the hospital. Yeah, I like Sometimes that. we do the hospital with our healthy bodies unit um, and we put out a cot and the students I are- I really like that one. Gemma really likes it because she gets to lay I on the cot. lay on the cot <laughs> and then the kids like poke me with, I'm fine shots, with that. 5,000 shots. I just lay there and it's, it's really great. Um, or we'll do it like a doctor's office. Um, but we thought because we were doing all these animals, we did polar animals and now we're doing bears, that it would be um, fun and relevant if we did a, a vet clinic. So it's very similar to our hospital setup but with animals. So I wanted to kind of just tell you how we introduce the centers to our kids. We get that question a lot. Like, how do you teach them to play at the center? Yeah. We don't actually teach them to play, but we try to set it up in a really fun way. So on the first day of the vet clinic, I always bring a teddy bear um, to the carpet for our morning meeting and just explain how sick my bear is, that he's been coughing all night, and I think his forehead feels warm. And what should we do about my poor sick bear? And then I bring my guinea pig. Guinea pig doesn't feel good. What, how do you know? Broken his leg. Oh, ouch. Mm -hmm. And so then we have the students brainstorm how we can help our poor sick teddy bear and our broken leg guinea pig. Broken leg guinea pig. <laughs> and of course they'll say, you need to take him to the doctor. We might even, you know, probe them a little bit more, especially our older kids. What do you call a doctor who takes care of pets of animals and a lot of them have animals so they'll know it's a vet yeah. like, super let's go take our our animals to the vet and then of course we have teddy bears and some other animals set up over here so they just run over i have a goldfish what's wrong with your goldfish he has no water <laughs> my poor goldfish is like <laughs> I bring this over like, what am I going to do? And the goldfish is, this is a critical like, situation. I will get a pot from the kitchen and I'll put the goldfish in a pot. I'm, Perfect. I heard the other little girl go, don't turn it on. <laughs> Did you hear her say that? No. <laughs> no. Oh my goodness, the fish soup. <laughs> anyway, so we try to set it up. We have to call this like this anticipatory, you know, activity or this motivational beginning where we um, set up, you know, what the play is going to be, kind of set the stage for them. And then they come over and the first day, like, don't you think? It's pretty much. Yeah. Like the it's, entire yeah. time, every student, the entire time. And Jamie and I normally role play it when we come over. So we'll kind of like we're gonna do for you guys, we do it for them. So they can kind of see if they've never been to a vet's office, then they will get a rough idea of how to do it. Yes. Um, if you have a bigger class or a smaller space, you might need to um, you know, give the students turns at the, at the vet center. But as much as possible, we encourage you to let the students um, direct their own play. So, okay, I'm gonna flip the camera around and we're just gonna give you a little view of how the vet clinic is set up and some of the different areas that we have over there and also the different ways that we've incorporated literacy and math learning into the dramatic play. So let me flip the camera around here. Let me take my bear. Okay. All right, so the vet clinic starts here. We have this new piece of furniture and it's like, a uh, what do you call it, like a storefront? It could be a grocery storefront, and we like to use it as like a receptionist desk. So in this first area, we have students who will uh, role play being the receptionist. 
It's like and I did the airport and I was everything. You, you did a really good job of everything. So they can make an appointment. If somebody shows up with a patient, they sign in. So they're practicing writing their names. And then, like we do with all of our dramatic play areas, I don't think your fish is going to make it. Oh, Just as an FYI, I think. I don't think it is either. Might be a terminal illness over there. Um, we put out these role play name tags so the students can choose how they're going to play. Uh, we try to give them different options. We have a surgeon. They could be the pet mom or the pet dad. It could be the vet or the nurse. I think there's an x-ray technician. There's a whole bunch. A whole bunch of different things in there where they can choose their role. So that's a really good way of supporting students who maybe don't know exactly how to play or they get stuck in the same, you know, the same play. So then the room is set up. Um, we have a waiting room over here where all of the pet moms and dads, very well done, can sit with their, that fish, I think he needs to... <laughs> some help. What do they call it when they like triage or like they take you right in? You don't have to wait in the waiting room. <laughs> that will be my fish. Your fish needs that. <laughs> yeah. So we have this waiting area set up where they can sit and wait and like I said we've got different stuffed animals over in our quiet space so they can choose a sick one. Um, and then we have these lab coats. It's a whole variety of costumes from Melissa and Doug. We love their dramatic play okay. sets. That one's an animal vet, but we also just have the regular doctor coat, a nurse's one with teddy bears on it. And then the problem that we were having with these uh, costumes is that the students were not able to hang them. They were falling all over the floor because they don't have a nice like tag or hook. And so Gemma, being her, oop, being her crafty self, just sewed these little um, ribbons inside of the dramatic play costumes so that they can hang them up similar to how we did at our art easel. So they can come over here and get dressed up like a doctor. We have an x-ray center on our light table. Which I won't turn on because we it's won't turn really bright. <laughs> it is really bright. Um, but we just printed off some x-rays of a cat and a dog and then they store them over here in this little folder on the side. So we've just taped like a plastic folder on the side where they can store all the x-rays. And so we have two exam rooms. So if, when you get called to the exam room here with your pet, um, then the doctor's got his lab coat on and they can come and get all of the equipment that they need. We have four stethoscopes. If you watched us earlier in the week, we told you how we actually had 18 stethoscopes, but we've narrowed it down to four. And we like to label all of our supplies. Um, we do a double label system. So one label goes on the basket and one label goes on the spot mm. where the basket belongs because it gets moved all around. Although I've taped the baskets down. Yeah. Because Gemma's gonna try. Do, they, I try. We try to incorporate some math skills. So there's a scale there where they can weigh their pet. Really they're weighing themselves, <laughs> um, which is really just like a, a, a math activity. And what are you doing to your guinea pig? Taking his blood pressure. <laughs> I don't know how you take a blood pressure from a guinea pig. Oh, my sister Do was you? watching. Maybe she could help me out with that. Hey, Helen, how do you take the blood pressure of a guinea pig? Does it matter what the guinea know. pig's blood pressure is? Um, and so we just have all of our different doctor tools sorted into baskets. And we try to label everything so that to the best of their ability, they can match the picture to the, um, to the supply and get it right, you know, sort of in the in the right basket so do you want to show the medical yes. like how we try to incorporate some literacy okay so when you have your little doctors ready they and your animal prepared at the, at the exam <laughs> table thank you we have a medical form so they would write their pet's name which i don't think i have a name from a guinea pig gp gp yeah <laughs> Um, now I don't have a guinea pig, so I could draw a picture of my guinea pig here, which I'm not a very good artist, so I will not draw a picture of my guinea pig. Um, he is here because he has broken his leg, so I would circle injury, and the treatment, uh, hmm, probably an x-ray and maybe um, some medicine, but most of the time you'll find that they have, they just do 20 shots. I'll say everybody gets a shot, it doesn't matter what your problem is. Even if you have um, a broken leg or whatever. You always get a shot, uh, everyone. <laughs> and love and cuddles, Yes, of and love and cuddles, always. And so we just really encourage the students to write for meaning, which is a really important emergent literacy skill. We want them to know that when you write something down, it's because it has a purpose. And so in addition to those medical records, then we also have um, medicine bottles. Now, 
There's a couple of different ways that you can do this. I've seen people who reuse or recycle real medicine bottles, but the problem that we have with that is we don't want our kids actually playing with, with, real, with medicine. real medicine. And so these are travel sized containers uh, that I got at Target. They're Target brand, like up and up brand. And there's the little, I don't know what they're supposed to be for, but like shampoo bottles. And then we just printed these prescriptions, you know, things ran them through our Xyron, like stickers and put them in there so that the kids can pretend like they're giving medicine without actually encouraging them to, pre to play with medicine. Um, and then they can write a uh, prescription if their pet needs to go Guinea home with pig. refill, <laughs> write the number. Five times, <laughs> and then they would write their name. Yep, so uh, we're really just trying to encourage them to um, write and read and do math. Somebody asked about the x-rays on the light table. Yes, I just printed them on transparency paper. All right, let's see around here. Um, you can print, yes, yeah, so the x-ray are part of the printable set, the dramatic play set. And you can just print them straight on transparency papers. So we did that for our hospital set, and then I printed, or I found different x-rays. There's a cat and a dog. Um, and we just printed those on transparency paper. So it's a really fun center. Today we encouraged our students, or we invited them, I guess is the right word, to bring their own teddy bears from home. We kind of said, um, do you have any sick teddy bears at home? And they were all like, yes, yes. of course we have sick teddy bears at home. <laughs> and so they all came with a stuffed animal today that they got to take care of at the vet's office. So the vet clinic and everything will be up on TPT tonight, today, soon. Okay, and I just want to say that sometimes our dramatic play can be a bit overwhelming if you don't have the space. Or, um, so even if you don't want to do anything this elaborate, you could do, do it on a much smaller scale. You don't have to do all of this. And if you don't have the Melissa and Doug outfits, you could just use white shirts. White shirts. Yeah, and you know, t pin a little badge or name badge yeah. to it. So don't let that put you put you off of trying it because I think you'll love it. Your kids are going to love it. I love this one. It's a fun one and and we know we have a big space and few kids um, but we just encourage everybody to work with the space that you have and take a couple of ideas like Gemma said um, from our dramatic play and hopefully incorporate them with your own. If you ever find that your students are not engaging in play very well or they're avoiding a center that's usually a sign that it's time to rotate something new through. It's time to put out something, you know, a new prop or to encourage them in some other new way. Um, that's usually our signal that it's either time to put it away or take something new out. Yeah. So uh, if you have any questions about the vet area, you can leave them in the comments and we'll try to hop back on. We hope you have a wonderful day, a great weekend. You get lots of time to play and learn with your kids. And thank you for joining us. Have a Did great weekend. Uh, yes, I think so. Have a great weekend. Have a wonderful Have a afternoon. Bye, everybody. Bye.